the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Bless his name for another opportunity. Everywhere, inside and outside, let's lift our hands and bless him. Let it rain, let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain, let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. tonight ask him for wisdom like you heard during the welcome note it's not enough to just have access to light the grace must be supplied to be doers please pray tonight oh God by the power of the Holy Spirit hallelujah 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 I always want us to realize that when we come before God like this we are coming to access wisdom it says by me kings reign and princes decree justice by me kings reign hallelujah you only arise and shine to the extent to which your light comes. He says, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. Every time 
the word of God is about to come to you it's a time to rejoice and open up your spirit because truly speaking one word from God will change your ideology and open you to a new dimension of his grace hallelujah God bless you please sit down Hallelujah. Once again, you're welcome. All those worshiping with us for the first time, you're most welcome. All those outside, you're most welcome. I want you to pay attention to tonight's teaching very carefully. Every spirit that wants to distract you this night, you must consciously cast it because what I'm about to share for many of you, it will open you to a new dimension of wisdom and a new dimension of grace. Say amen. amen. I've told us that time does not change anything. Time only reveals. It is light that brings the transformation and the changes that we need in our lives. So if you are waiting for time to change anything in your life, it will never change anything. Time will only reveal the truth about a thing or otherwise. But time in itself does not have the ability to change anything. Time is only relevant when there are other factors also in place. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your wisdom. There are a number of issues that I'll be talking about today. Hallelujah. I'd like us to look very deeply into the subject of relationships and marriage tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No distracting people. Everybody came for business tonight. So you sit down and listen. I'll be discussing a few issues um, that I think will really challenge us. I, I went through a recent statistics about Christian homes and Christian marriages and it really, really broke my heart to see how that the number of failed marriages we have in the church, we're not talking of outside the church, the number of failed marriages in the church is becoming alarming um, that I'm talking about marriage does not mean that I would, I would not talk about many other issues. As I'm teaching about marriage, some of you will hear revelations that will bring you into deeper dimensions of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. There are so many things I want to talk about. There are corrections, major generational corrections that God is going to be bringing. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about a few issues that I think many men of God have shied away from or have not really sustain the intelligence in the spirit to address very genuinely and truthfully hallelujah and so we'll be looking very closely um, you would expect that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ being a church that is called after his name we should excel in every area of our lives most especially marriage especially because the issue of relationships and marriage was God's idea. It was not man's prayer request to God and then his answer. So you would wonder why two Christians can be born again, praying in tongues, and then will not be able to have a very successful marriage. And the, the rate is alarming, brothers and sisters. The, the rate is alarming. And then another closely related to that is another very interesting discovery and it has been proven again that it is more difficult to get married in our generation in fact 10 times more difficult to get married in today's world and in today's church than it was um, a, a few years ago and we're going to be examining that why should that be so because as at the time of our parents and grandparents, they didn't have access to marriage seminars. They didn't have access to books. They didn't have access to resources. Is that true? But right now we have almost every man of God I know who has written books has touched on the subject of marriage. Every church convention, women programs, 
There are all kinds of women ministries that have come up trying to address the issue of marriage. There are all kinds of articles. In fact, there are ministries that are founded, dedicated towards the family life. At least we understand right now that the family is one of the mountains that God has set for influence. Yet, the more these informations come, the more the graph of excellence in marriage and relationships generally deteriorate. And um, I've identified some reasons by the Spirit of God and we're going to share on a number of things. The first area we're going to consider is we want to find out why it keeps getting difficult to get married in the church today. What exactly is the puzzle? What is wrong? Is it that God has changed his mind about marriage and relationships? Please pay attention. Marriage, single, this is from the spirit and this will bless us. Why many Christians remain unmarried, not willfully, and why many more Christians will remain unmarried in the days to come. Hallelujah. Number one, the first reason why many Christians or many in the body of Christ, loving people, people who sincerely love God and fear the Lord, may remain unmarried for a very long time. The first reason here is misconceptions and confusion about the concept of the will of God or the perfect match. Write it down. The first reason is misconceptions and confusions about the concept of, you can put in quote, the will of God or the perfect match. Write it down. We hail you most high. We truly hail you most high. There is a widespread, uh, listen carefully, there is a widespread confusion in the body of Christ. Pentecostal circles, orthodox circles, Presbyterian circles, there is a widespread confusion and that confusion keeps multiplying as to the concept of what we have come to know in the body of Christ as the will of God in marriage or as we call it in a secular society, the perfect match. This has been one of the major reasons why many believers do not get married and why many may not get married. It's a different thing if you are planning, you have your goals and so on and so forth. But there are so many people who truly desire to be married. 40 years, 50 years, 55 years, 60 years in the church. They tell you they are still trusting God for a life partner or trusting God to settle down. And the number one reason is that there has been a misconception. Of course, perpetuated by men of God and marriage counselors and Christian counselors and Christian books and relationship ministries about the concept of the will of God and the perfect match. Is that true? There are so many people today who may never get married because they listen to a message in a marriage seminar or your pastor or another man of God or somewhere, a convention, a conference you went to and you heard a woman of God or a man of God you respect and admire communicate a thought about the will of God about the perfect match and the danger of making a wrong decision in marriage the grave consequence of having someone who is not designed for you and that has put fear in the body of Christ is that true? unbelievers don't have any problem because they can hop into any relationship and hop out. They can get married and then for, for unbelievers, marriage is a contract, not a covenant. So there is no fear. I can step in and get married to this lady. After two years, if it does not work, I throw her out and go my way. So because of that, um, that freedom that godlessness affords them, they have no fear. Is that true? One person can be in a relationship with 20 ladies, for instance. 
and then the person does not care frankly because he's at liberty at any time to let any of them go but there seems to be this sacredness in the body of christ which is very good but if not balanced it will mislead a lot of people so the fear of missing out on the will of god the confusion as to how to really ascertain is there one person for a guy or a lady that has been destined when you were born that one person was born and if you never find that person you are in confusion there's been all kinds of teaching like that is that true and many ladies are sincerely waiting and then um the icing of the cake has been the concept of prophetic revelation prophetic revelation has further complicated this point right when you identify a lady and you tell her for instance i'm seeing your husband in a vision your husband's name is john he's a yellow guy tall um is a graduate of unn and and so on and so forth and all through that lady's life 10 years 20 years she convinces herself that she's enduring because of a prophetic word that was given it doesn't matter how many christian borrowers come around because she's motivated by the sincere desire now it's not like she's trying to be difficult are you is god speaking to you already this this teaching tonight will bring a very radical deliverance to many people hallelujah so she's waiting for the perfect match every guy that comes she's looking at him based on the prophetic template and she trusts the man of god who gave her that revelation he may not be a fake man of god and then for 20 years she's waiting and you ask her what exactly are you waiting for and she said all the days of my appointed time i will wait until my change comes now watch this watch this there are many people who waited like that and their change truly came someone came exactly like that and it was worth the wait and there are others who have waited like that and five years turned to 10 10 turned to 15 15 turned to 25 years when their colleagues the children of their colleagues are graduating and getting married they are still waiting for that promise and they died in anger and bitterness what exactly is the concept of the will of god in terms of marriage what does the bible teach not what does a marriage counselor teach not what let me tell you something marriage is a mystery no matter how long you are married you cannot have enough audacity to talk about it so accurately you know i i truly believe listen listen i believe um in the fact that experience can teach a lot of things when a man has been married for 30 years 35 years i believe he has something to say but the mysterious nature of marriage is such that there is no amount of time you stay in marriage that will afford you every information and knowledge you know as far as you are living in a mortal body hallelujah is that true paul the apostle for instance was never married yet he articulated a lot of things and he guided the new testament church about marriage jesus himself was never married yet he spoke about the issue of marriage and divorce so i i want to clarify something up front there are many people who believe that because they are married they convince themselves that they have gained enough experience to tell everybody anything and they create a doctrine out of their experience and they tell everybody shut up what do you know about marriage marriage is a mystery it's not revealed by your longevity there it's revealed by the agency of the holy spirit is god helping us tonight because many erroneous books listen have come as a result of people who claim they have experience 30 years in marriage 40 years in marriage and they market their template on what they think their experience has been as at the time they were getting married there were social cultural differences at that time a woman was believed to only be dependent women did not go to school then 
women did not do a lot of things then a woman never dreamt of owning a house is that true a woman never dreamt of getting a job so that that ideology of marriage as per that time made a man absolutely responsible for everything and so the woman stayed at home as a responsibility whether the man treated her well or not she knew that living was never an option because the ideology given to her was that if you leave the home you have no reason to live again so that man who may have been punishing his wife for 30 years only because they are not divorced convinces himself that he has been doing the right thing because they are together are you getting the point now and he takes what is supposed to be his experience and he starts to mentor younger generations and say after all my wife is here with me we have been 30 years in marriage that woman has gone through 30 years of hell it's just that her, her ideology has kept her there and because they are not divorced the man convinces himself that he understands the formula for marriage wrong in our contemporary society today it is possible to come into a lady's life who already has a car she already has a house is that true probably has a very good job and so when you come um that dependency mindset maybe for instance in time past you know women had to wait exclusively for a man if he did not give her 10 naira she would not eat now a woman is a ceo of a bank and she's married to the man so obviously things have changed are you getting the point now and many of us are already on our way to a lot of confusion in time past for instance when a guy wanted to ask a lady out there's no western diplomacy you walk straight to her and say i want you to be my wife pray about it that was the end of it you try that today and see how it will hurt you in a way you will never recover from see that now a man listen listen he he got his wife that way and now he teaches you he says look stand up and take steps walk up to the lady and speak the bible says open your mouth and i'll feel it and you now get up taking 1975 or 1954 to 2015 and you go and meet the lady and said i want to marry you i hear you are from my place pray about it get back to me tomorrow because there was a, there was an arrogance that men at that time had a man was a distinguished personality educated or not it was a privilege for a man to walk up to a lady in fact there were certain arranging marriages that were done at that time that the first time the lady sees the man that's when she's leaving the house it, they didn't have any dating nonsense they did no restaurant they just called her and said abigail where are you this is your husband and she rejoiced she rejoiced because for her it was a privilege but marriage in the 21st century has changed you take that template i promise you you can pray all the tongues you want to pray you will be in for a disaster Are we ready to fly now? This is an appetizer. Hallelujah. Oh, I have many things to talk about today. My goodness. So the misconception on the concept of the will of God. What exactly does the Bible teach about the will of God? What exactly does the Bible teach? I've heard of different concepts. Concept number one is one man to one woman right what people will want to call the predeterminate counsel of god meaning that before you arrived your wife had been there she had been um she's somewhere around the earth your assignment is not to look for a woman your assignment is through whatever channel and means you can afford find that one woman and if you do not find her, you miss out on the will of god and there have been testimonies both for or against that concept the interesting thing about marriage is any point you raise whether godly or ungodly there are testimonies to prove its validity are you seeing the confusion now any point you raise about marriage there are testimonies to prove its validity that's what makes it very very technical because whatever perspective you look at it there are people who will agree with it and there are people who will disagree with it the concept of one man and one woman for instance there are people 
who have given us stories that they were minding their business and they saw a vision that's where the concept of vision came from is that not true they saw a vision the name of the lady her address and everything and it happened exactly as they saw we have watched on tv and gone for many conferences when a man of god can help a woman decipher certain things and tell her with accuracy the life partner for her so that revelation now brings us to a point where there is even more confusion in the body of christ if a man of god can tell me exactly the name of my husband why beat around the bush why not just pay the price and look for a man of God whose discernment has been proven to work well and just sow into his life and let this man please end the confusion in my life. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the danger of this. It has brought more confusion, especially to singles. Ladies, have you seen 10 guys come to you and every one of them told you, I had a dream. I saw a vision. And they are not lying. They are not telling a lie. Are you getting me? I counsel people all the time. And you can find multiple guys or multiple ladies all having a vision or a dream about the same person. And you may think they are just corny. No, 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 no. Some of them were minding their business. Some of them have had repeated dreams and visions for others as much as 50 or 100 about the same person. How do are you am I blessing you tonight? And now this innocent brother minding his business has seen all kinds of visions. Every time he sleeps, this is the sister he's seen. And then the sister is engaged engaged to somebody who is born again and this guy is confused he does not know what to call the name of his situation right now should i pray for that relationship to be broken should i disagree with my visions and yet nobody is speaking about it on stage there are many believers just jumping but carrying loads of confusion and guessing what they think their way around this relationship thing is this is one of the reasons why there is no marriage in the church hallelujah to an extent that many people today do not even trust their dreams and visions or any experience again because you had a dream about brother a he married in your very presence now the dream changed brother b he's getting married next week and you just say no 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 something is wrong i know i'm not demonized but i know something is wrong how many brothers are patiently waiting for some sisters now do you know that some people have even trusted god to an extent that even when the guy is married unconsciously they begin to wish the lady death because they believe that that my what is my own is my own you go to prophetic ministries and i, I don't say this in a critical way and see the names of brothers and sisters that fly around the altar of men of God engaging all kinds of mysteries of restoration mysteries of reclaiming mysteries of of forcing what is your own to come to you the Bible says thy word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my path let me tell you something if nobody talks about this there will be more confusion in the body of christ you will find ladies in their 30s and their 40s not getting married pretty lady virtuous lady but the fear every time a lady wants to enter a relationship she remembers a prophecy she had every time a lady wants to enter a relationship she just things am i so desperate that i'm giving up the better now to take the good let me be a little patient maybe my change will come this has hurt the sisters more you know why because the brothers are the ones who do the asking the sisters do the positioning and it's frustrating to position yourself under factors that are very ambiguous as a guy what's come to us you just say lord stop me if i'm wrong i'm on my way going there are two ways God can lead you. Start or stop. 
you can initiate it or you move and say, Lord, if it's against your will, stop me. But for a lady, her job is to position herself. And brothers and sisters, it's frustrating when you position yourself and you keep positioning yourself days turn to weeks to months to years to decades misconception on the confusion about the will of god and the perfect match number two second reason why many christians remain unmarried ready unreasonable standards and expectations unreasonable standards and expectations either from the guy or from the lady or from both of them the reason why many people in the body of christ will remain unmarried for a long time is what i call unreasonable standards and expectations write it down please look up now we are not against compromising the scriptural standards that god has put the bible is very clear about certain standards that believers should not compromise however when the standards become unreasonable when the expectations become unreasonable what are some of those expectations unreasonable expectations on financial status unreasonable expectation on levels of establishment unreasonable expectation about physical appearances physique and etc one of the reasons why our parents married fast was that their standards were fair enough for anybody to just get married but right now believers in our beat to say look i'm excellent i'm the head and not the tail even the neck i won't take i'm the head and not the tail you see so those those motivational teachings which are very important and very good have brought us to a point where in a bit to have a discontent for average we have exaggerated it and lifted bars up there are ladies for instance who have vowed that they must marry a millionaire they have sworn between them and their destiny no matter what the man is doing if he's not a millionaire i will not marry him he must be born again and he must be a millionaire there are guys who have vowed that he must be a fair lady or a dark lady or a slim lady right it must be a lady that speaks queen's english it must be a lady that studied in faculty of arts i won't take science i won't take medicine people are that meticulous right now there are unreasonable standards the lady i must marry must be a lady with an exceptional dress sense must be a lady who is a chef must be a lady who is a prophetess must be a lady who is this and that and by the time you array all those standards the only person who fits those standards is jesus christ hallelujah is god speaking to us how many ladies have harassed brothers because of financial status what are you doing this is how god is helping me i'm starting look look let me tell you up front if if god does not help you faster i will be on my way it should better help you you need god to be your ebenezer fast because i can't wait there is a standard i i am a i am a high maintenance lady i don't use we less than three thousand or five thousand my clothes are designers are you willing and the brother stands there stupefied and confused not knowing what to do with himself now it's okay to laugh but i hope you are getting the message so financial status one of the biggest barriers how many brothers have gotten into things that are ungodly because they are trying to match up a standard it even gets worse when there are other friends involved in the relationship who want to tap their share of the national cake they say i helped you i was part of the process for this relationship i my own share must come out so if you are taking her to mr biggs you are taking four people tells you these are my covenant friends we are church people 
what you do to one you do to all and you, you see the pressure financial status and then the issue of establishment do you have a car no do you what kind of house do you have rented or your personal house say well I'm, I'm renting somewhere how many one bedroom just self-contained no 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 self-contained what happens when my mother comes what happens when my sisters come what happens when look i'm a notable person in church everybody knows me what is all this where are the extra rooms you want to embarrass me you want to drive us out to the parlor and there are all kinds of confusion and the guy is now wondering well, I rented this house 70,000. But right now, as it is, to be able to get a three bedroom flat to be almost maybe 700,000 or 500,000. And the lady said, Me, I'm not ready for anything. Unreasonable standards. Make sure as I speak, you'll be looking at yourself in this message. Then, physical appearance. Brothers. Brothers physical appearance there's no lady that is enough she must be this she must be that her eyelashes must lap the the, the coverture must be meticulous oh come on i'm a young man how old do you think i am 100 years she must be this figure eight figure whatever and all of that she's a lady that when she's smiling i want to see bright teeth i, I don't see what wants what, what looks like my own i already have bad dentition if i you see let me tell you listen listen there's nothing wrong in desiring all these wonderful things except that the bible does not leave us in confusion as to the fact that these things no matter how great will fade with time are you hearing what i'm saying so there are many brothers who will never get married to a lady because they think they have unreasonable standards and i have watched this with my own eyes i've watched it put pressure on ladies i've seen ladies under pressure because now that they are aware that many christian brothers seem to have stepped the bar to the sky they are so physically conscious even in church Open your mouth and pray. And you are, you are talking about something, a destiny altering prayer. And you watch the way the lady is praying. Because somehow in her mind she's aware that somebody is looking at her. Once your face is rough, even if it's temporary, you are in a hurry to adjust it. That prayer, your powder and all of that. You see, that overconsciousness of the physical appearance has destroyed a lot of people. There are people who cannot go to certain churches because they think they do not fit to the physical mode i don't have the clothes i don't think i have this and that second reason why we don't marry unreasonable standards and expectations let's hurry up number three difficulty in early establishment write it down and i'll say i'll explain difficulty in early establishment this is an african predicament sadly the continent of africa has produced a lot of delay in marriage because in africa as a continent and nigeria there is difficulty the average young man cannot guarantee that within the first 25 years of his life he will be established when there are strikes in an institution somebody goes for a course of four years and ends up spending five years six years seven years is that true and then you are supposed to probably go for service and then it is prolonged and delayed all of these institutional factors have contributed to making it difficult for young people to get established and then the high unemployment rate out of a set of graduates maybe one million less than a hundred thousand of them are guaranteed to get very decent jobs within the first three years and because the brother is not a thief it becomes very difficult very difficult to be established the poor salary structure in nigeria has accounted for the late establishment of many people is God speaking to us tonight? An average graduate in Nigeria can be so humiliated to an extent 
there are masters people collecting salaries of less than 20,000, 15,000. There are masters holders doing security works at the gate because they are desperate. They have to make ends meet. Hallelujah. And so someone pays the price, goes to school, learns, graduates, do all the rigors of, 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 of the 6334 system only for you to face a poor salary structure. Look at me. With 20,000, let's, let's use an average job, let's say a teacher. With 20,000, in how many years will you ever know what establishment is? Assuming you got a job immediately, 20,000 times 12 is what? Help me please. 240. Multiply that times 10 years if nothing changes. 2.4 million. What is the average budget for establishment? Do a little mathematics on your head. If you get a self-contained as a young man or a single bedroom or a two bedroom flat and God helps you, you are dreaming of getting a little car, no matter how little, equipping the house with everything, you find out that that money will barely feed you. And in Africa, the average young man has some siblings depending on him. Right? If it's a polygamous family, you still have stepbrothers and stepsisters. May God help you that you are not the first son. Added responsibility. And then the lady you want to get married to, if she comes from a family that are really trusting God for a savior and you come in before any talk of marriage starts, your response you kick right away into your responsibility. So add all these factors together. Difficulty in settling down. We have even for those who want to start businesses, we have very strict business policies in Nigeria, for instance. In, in London, right? And England and every other part like that, uh, parts of Britain, you can register a company in 10 minutes. How many minutes? 10 minutes. You can actually go online and register a company in 10 minutes. In Nigeria, you try to register a company. You will first spend between 60 to 150,000, right? For an average, small size company. And it will take you at least two to three months. Think about the difficulty. So it is difficult for the average young man who wants to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity to be established. So in Nigeria, you find a young man 30 years, 35, even 40 years, still in his father's house. Not necessarily because he's not responsible. And he went to school, but the times are hard. Is God helping us tonight? The fourth reason why many in the body of Christ remain unmarried and may happen like that for a long time. Are you ready for point number what now? Four, parental influences. Ungodly parental influences. Ungodly parental influences. There are godly parental influences. Where parents guide their children. Guide their children to make right decisions. Guide their children to be established. But it's unfortunate that in Africa, and especially in Nigeria, there are very, very poor and ungodly parental influences that have stopped people from getting married. Influences ranging from cultural barriers to high and unreasonable marriage requirements. And then the influences of parents and family even after marriage. See that? There are many parents who have stopped their children, for instance, from settling down because they have created certain standards. How many of you seated here looking at me? Your parents have warned you directly or indirectly. Don't ever bring a poor man in this house. There are some of you, they carried the map of Nigeria and showed you very clearly. And said, every state I marked X on, don't bring any guy from there. Is that true? And so, the lady is there and all she's doing is looking for someone from her place. And 25 rolls around. 
50 or 30 years, 35, and she's still searching for a godly brother. Don't forget, she's not just searching for anybody. There are parents who are so desperate about marrying from their place. They don't care whether he's born again or not. You would rather marry a failure from your place. So that those cultural barriers. In fact, there are families where even from your place you don't marry. There is a clan they have drawn a line for you on. Is that true? The reason why it was very easy for many parents is because during their time, listen carefully, during their time, um, we did not have the issue of migration and movement from one place to the other. An average man can be born and bred and grow up and die within a locality like Zaria and never even visit a place like Abuja. Is that true? And so because of that, they live what we call a communal life. All the ladies will go to the stream together to fetch water or go to bath together. And so it was easy. The guys knew where to go and look for the ladies. They knew that when it was evening, they had traditional dances. They had all kinds of platforms that brought them together. But the world in the 21st century has changed. Many of you have never been to your village. You don't even know where it is. You only have had the name or seen it on TV. Some of us have never gone to our village. And now they are mounting pressure on you. Come home. We will prepare a lady for you. And you are saying, what are you saying? They say, that's, that's how, that's how my, your, your father and I got married. Unfortunately, this is very strong, especially among the mothers. Is God helping us? And so there are many Christians confused. How many believers are in godly relationships? Godly relationships by God's standards, but do not have the courage to even talk to their parents. Because the moment they say, mommy or daddy, there's something I want to tell you. They say, what is it? They say, I want to talk about marriage. He say, let me even, before I even hear the nonsense you have to tell me, does the guy have a car? Yes or no? No long story. Not he's going to buy. Does he have a car? Yes or no? Parents have stopped children from marrying because of car. Parents have stopped children from marrying. How many parents have stopped children from marrying because they say if you must marry this guy, he must be willing to come and live in Abuja or live in Lagos or come and stay close to us. Have you seen people like that? Maybe he's a lecturer in Yola or a lecturer in Gombe State or in Zaria or in Kano. They say, I don't want to hear anything. If he will come to Lagos or he will come to Port Harcourt and settle there, then I can allow him. I consider that to be the height of self-centeredness and at extreme levels, wickedness. Many parents, I'm sorry to say this, but I say this without apology, that there are so many parents who have not followed the path of success in their life and they have failed and are now using their children as a restoration tool. Many parents have yoked their ladies and said, look, you know we have suffered. You better go and bring a man that will wipe our tears. Mommy, there are two guys who are standing. They say, hey, the first guy loves God. And you find the mother not interested in what the daughter is saying. He loves God. He's very serious. In fact, the way he's going, it looks like they will ordain him. And the mother is looking ordained. That, that ordain him just irritates her. Because now they, they, it means that he's going into ministry. There's one other one. He's not serious. He's not nice. But God is helping him. He's walking here and there. There's a, a place where he's walking. He's getting good salary. He says, so who are you choosing now? He said, oh, honestly, me, I'm a Christian. He said, leave that, you know. The world has changed. You better go to that brother. And then, how many children cost their parents in their homes? Cost their parents. How many mothers and fathers carry guilt all around? Because whenever the man beats up the woman, because of not knowing the Lord, they come back home. And the parents say, just go back. It's, it's like that. ungodly parental influences others have influenced their children because of their ego they have a cabal of people and all their friends their children married wealthy people is that true and so when you come this is especially for many of us the ladies they just feel uncle so 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 his son married a senator's son and to this his son came from uk i have i have watched with shock the way RNG has been done on the internet. Parents go all out of their way.
to make arrangement they say there is a guy in france as he's coming into nigeria he's coming to marry all this dowry thing people shout about that guy just knows dowry was paid he's not even aware of the basket he has never seen the box that was given but simply because he's in france he came into nigeria carried the wife in two weeks took her and they never saw their daughter again only to get to france and they found out that the guy was a drug baron but he lied to them that he was a ceo how about unreasonable marriage requirements you pay dowry in cash 100,000 in kind 1 million are you saying that kind of thing unreasonable requirements uncles and aunties and well-wishers that never gave you 10 naira when you were in school now that you are done they come in as stakeholders and they dominate everything say we can't allow our daughter to marry cheap you are going to bring a cow and that cow is not just any kind of cow the cow must be this and that after that you are going to bring two two trucks of yam after that you're going to bring abc and the guy is shaking there the guy is wondering how much is the budget for an average marriage right now in nigeria i'm talking of a decent marriage you wouldn't imagine how much is to rent where 40 or 50 people from your village are coming how much is to rent that place and feed them and many come after the marriage they will never go back they'll say want to wait one week and see what is going on and all through that one week you are paying these are very real issues so a young man saves money to start up life after marriage he starts his home with debt and then in anger he now starts beating the wife are you seeing that now because he, if the wife shouts at him he say I bought you I didn't pay dowry for you i literally purchased you so don't even open your mouth and shout if i bring a concubine in this house just go out quietly don't even tell me anything many issues were pretending in church that are not serious issues and it's increasing increasing there are many parents that put pressure on their children Look, this is our marriage. Um, an ambassador is coming from UK. A governor is coming from Adamawa State. Our uncle who is in Jerusalem is coming in. So make sure that you organize the marriage to the taste of the dignitaries that are coming. And the young man is saying, look, I'm starting out small. He say, Mr. Man, I, we are telling you now. It's not an advice. You either choose the lady or leave everything. But the Lord of Sabaoth is watching. Let me tell you. Because many of the parents who are talking like that, they could not buy one tuba of yam when they married our mothers. Is that true? One tuba of yam. Yet the woman believed in them. She got up 13 years, 15 years, 18 years, 20 years and naively followed that man. And for 10 years of their marriage, she was in hell. She watched him go to school and become blessed. And today now, he can stand and forget what God did for him. How many parents forget one of our mothers in lagos i remember one time she was talking to us we went for a program and then they are very wealthy people very comfortable and very wealthy and she was talking and uh, she was saying when it was time to get married there was one other man who was who seemed to be more blessed than her husband and they were influencing her and she said no this is the man she will marry and she said when she married her husband he had nothing although he argued and said he had a bicycle but she said he had nothing today they are blessed and their marriage is heaven on earth many of us ladies would have married since 2005 or 6 or 7 till now we are waiting because there are certain ungodly parental influences let's hurry up number number what number five The fifth reason why many Christians remain unmarried is 
what I call increased breakdown in moral and spiritual standards. Increased breakdown in moral and spiritual standards. Increased breakdown in moral and spiritual standards. Standards that have been lowered. Look at me. There are, uh, because our generation has so downgraded the sacredness of marriage, right? And morality. Things ranging from premarital affairs. Right now, it's, it's okay to just sleep around. So, all of the things that are supposed to be the blessings and the benefits that should only be enjoyed within the context of marriage are now being experienced by people after marriage so there is no desire there is no longing there's nothing to look forward to in marriage again how many people do you know a man and a woman not married dowry has not been paid but they live together why should they marry are you getting what i'm saying now why should a lady marry when marriage would tie her to one man and then she's permitted to have seven or eight men who can supply her finances and now you want to tie her down to one man she doesn't want that kind of thing because she wants liberty and she wants money provided all the time why will you want a man to tie himself to one wife when he can fly around to any hotel and whoever is available there he can have 10 girlfriends 20 girlfriends so the degradation in the standard of morality and spirituality is the reason why many people will not get married for many people, marriage is an inconvenience because they want their unguided life of lust. I want to be able to sleep around anytime I want. I want to be able to be free. I don't want to sit down and then I think that I have a wife and children at home. Many men want that kind of thing. I don't want no responsibility. I don't want to look at a lady and my wife is tapping me and saying, who are you looking at? No. Are you seeing that now? So that degradation in moral and spiritual standards. Guys and ladies stay together, for instance. Unfortunately, sometimes the house belongs to the lady. And then the man comes as a squatter because she likes him. And he stays there, eats her food, drives her car, watches her television, sleeps on her bed, enjoys her cushion, and the man does not want to get married. Why should I get married and try to be responsible for a family? When I have gotten a wolf, there is a lady here who is working with federal government. She can work and bring everything. My own is just to be enjoying the money. Degradation in moral and spiritual standards that's created irresponsibility, that's created all kinds of things. And then there have been unbalanced teachings in the body of Christ. That have encouraged this kind of living. In a bid to bring the church into the revelation of who we are in Christ. And what Christ has done for us. And the reality of the fact that we are the righteousness of, of God in Christ right now. And the concept of sin and the concept of holiness and righteousness. To, in an attempt to um, balance it properly. There are individuals that have swung to the other side of the pendulum. And so people are now authorized. That, that conviction of the Holy Spirit towards ungodliness is no longer there. Is that true? So I can, I can do anything I want to do so long as I run back to God and say, Lord, you know that I won't do it again. So we keep playing all these games with ourselves. Is God helping us? I have identified this as the top five reasons why many in the body of Christ may not get married. Confusion as to the concept of the will of God. People have spiritualized that concept of the will of God to their detriment. And then unreasonable standards then difficulty in early establishment, then ungodly parental influences, and increased breakdown in moral and spiritual standards. Now, I want to teach you something.
there there has been confusion in the subject of marriage especially trying to learn what the bible says and what the pathway the biblical pathway to marriage should be questions like at what age should a guy get married or a lady get married right questions like what are the do's and don'ts how do i know i am prepared for marriage is it when you graduate from an institution or is it when you see bed on your face or ladies is it when all the friends around your circle of influence start getting married you now feel it's a sign what exactly are some of the provisions that the bible puts for us to prepare us to know that we are prepared for marriage write it down school of ministry permit me to use a bit of your lecture and teach tonight i taught the school of ministry yesterday and i'll take a little extract on what i taught them to be able to guide us there are three dimensions everyone right there are three dimensions that a man must find himself operating in to know he is ready for marriage and there are three dimensions that a woman must find herself operating in if you are not operating in these dimensions you are simply not ready for marriage doesn't matter how old or young you are write this down and i'll explain it very quickly the three dimensions in a man are number one as a husband number two as a father open bracket provider and protector please write it down the first dimension that a man must train himself in to be prepared for marriage is as a husband second as a father and then number three as the spiritual head or the priest of a home write down for the lady the first dimension a wife second dimension a mother put in bracket a homemaker and then the third dimension a minister please look up while I attempt to explain this point let me have three guys please three gentlemen come Sam any two guys can come just stand here it's in the character of God thank you sir it's in the character of God look up to operate in a multifaceted dimension for instance we see God operating as Rafa we see God operating as Sikenu. We see God operating as Sabaoth, right? We also see him in redemption operating as both the lion and the lamb. So it's not unusual for God to be multifaceted in his operation. And he created man in that image. And so for any man to really know that he's prepared and ready for marriage, graduation is not enough reason for you to think you are prepared for marriage. Advancement in age it's not enough reason for you to think you are prepared in marriage now all the brothers look up and sisters also look up there are three dimensions in every man let's call the first dimension the husband call the second dimension the father and call this the third dimension the spiritual head is that all right the dimension of a man as a husband defines the scope of his ministry to his wife it's important for every man to understand that scripturally you have a ministry that is exclusive to your wife and if you have not trained yourself to be able to carry out that ministry to your wife effectively you will never be able to get married and you will never enjoy your marriage the dimension of a man as a husband defines everything uh, uh, his intimacy with his wife defines meeting her emotional needs define meeting her psychological needs all of that together defines the role of that man as a husband watch this the danger with this is that many in our society are not husbands they may be fathers they may be men of god and i preach this with a bias to those in ministry many pastors are poor husbands many leaders are poor husbands because we are busy trying to fend for the family we are busy trying to do ministry and do this and that and we forget that there is an exclusive role ordained by god 
that a man should play to his wife how many of our mothers are starved of the love of the attention the togetherness the emotional satisfaction that should come on account of complete marriage there are many pastors many businessmen many church leaders many entrepreneurs many public figures and celebrities who are starving their wives of this dimension every brother here i want you to know that if you are preparing for marriage you are also preparing to be a husband all the brothers say husband yes you must you are not a husband when a wife comes to you you are a husband when you are prepared to meet that need don't wait for marriage to make you a husband. You are first a husband before marriage. At the point where you are aware of the demands. This dimension trains you to understand who a woman is. Women are fragile. Women are emotional people. The Bible says to dwell with them according to knowledge. One of the greatest ministry of a man at this point is to be able to give his wife what i call emotional security watch this when a man begins to compare the lady he's going out with or his wife with another lady your la the lady you are going out with is standing there and you turn and look at another lady and say my goodness what in the world is this what am i looking at what you are simply telling your lady is you are short of a standard and you begin to mount pressure on that lady every lady wants to come to the man god has given her and feel secure it is not a news again that both male and female we all have assets and liabilities there is nobody including myself who is free of assets and liabilities there are weaknesses there are strengths there's nothing embarrassing about it are you getting the point now so a husband is one who has understood this dimension and will protect his wife emotionally will protect the lady they are going out with emotionally because he understands that her love for me is a response to the confidence that i give her how many ladies get angry the moment they begin to see another lady coming around their man they are angry they are resentful they begin to feel insecure because they feel this sister is obviously finer than me this sister is obviously this and that than me and because she knows that the man has not created a track record of celebrating her the way she is she begins to feel insecure that's what has brought jealousy that's what has brought presumption between ladies same thing for guys so brothers if you want to be you want to go into marriage you must realize that you have a responsibility to your wife to protect her emotionally protect her emotionally women are very vulnerable the prettiest of all ladies will still need reconfirmations forget all that shout ladies shout no i don't need anything it's a lie they were designed to work on confirmations reaffirmations how many people are in relationships and never for once he does not make seeing the lady look like a big deal he looks like look you are easily replaceable at that point listen brothers if you ever carry any man's daughter and give her an impression she's easily replaceable you are not being sincere to her if you don't love her or you think she's not fine enough leave her alone god will bring somebody who loves her and will passionately follow her i hate seeing ladies chasing after guys helplessly i said hey, hey if i shout he will leave me oh brother don't leave me don't leave me if you leave, where will i go to and the guy is happy he's taking advantage of their vulnerability brothers it must change in the name of jesus christ is god speaking to us tonight how many of our fathers how many of us have seen our parents father and mother just take out time from their busy schedule to sit together and talk when was the last time you ever saw your father and your mother thinking of not restaurant in the home there just sitting down to eat and talk if they are together they are quarreling he's rebuking her he's lost the dimension of a husband many people think the dimension of a husband is only the pre-children dimension so it's the dimension that a man shows a woman until the arrival of children. 
from the time the woman gets pregnant the man feels I've, I've graduated from being a husband from now henceforth my work is to be father is that not true and a spiritual head and so they rob the wife of that emotional dimension number two you are preparing for marriage it means you are preparing to be a father look up let me tell you something you are not a father when you have children the word father is the greek word abba right the bible says he's given his spirit whereby we cry abba father 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 the word abba means source and sustainer not the one who reproduces children necessarily you are a father when you are the originator of a thing and you are the sustainer speaking in the context of marriage you only become a father when you are a provider and protector write it down fatherhood has nothing to do necessarily with giving birth to children this is where a lot of people get it wrong the moment they have a bouncing baby boy or a bouncing baby girl or some children they convince themselves that they are fathers no sir in the bible the bible's view of fatherhood listen the bible's view of fatherhood is not just reproduction alone is the ability to provide and protect Here's what the Bible says about being a father. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. The Bible says, paraphrasing, that any man that cannot provide, protect, cater for his family, it says that he has lost the faith. He has given up the faith and is worse than an infidel or an unbeliever. Brothers, this is a very serious point and I want you to pay attention whether you are married or you are preparing for marriage ask yourself am i a father you don't become a father when you get married you get married because you are a father many men are not fathers the hallmark of fatherhood is responsibility the ability to provide and protect it says but if any provide not for his own So are you a father brothers ask yourself i want to marry the question god is asking you is are you a father it's not enough to be a husband you must be a father you will have to provide the conducive atmosphere provide love provide food provide shelter provide security provide the enabling environment for your wife and your children to find expression provide spiritual guidance provide mentorship you have to protect your family right protect them against the physical hazards protect them against the the emotional intrusions of society that's what it means to be abba abba so in our generation when a man is married and does not have children we say he's a husband but not yet a father the moment the wife gives birth we say finally i'm now a father wrong societally correct but scripturally wrong fatherhood is about provision and protection no gentleman should get into marriage when you are not a father you are not a father by your age you are not a father just by longevity of time you are not a father by the appearance of many children whether spiritual or physical you are a father according to your ability to provide every lady asks a gentleman close to you are you a father don't answer i am matured i'm not a small boy nobody's arguing we know you are 35 are you a father that's what we want to know tonight are you a father I was born 90s uh, we are not arguing are you a father you neglect fatherhood when you become irresponsible all the brothers say in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be a father indeed say it loud in the name of Jesus 
I receive grace to provide for my family and to protect my family. Say it again. I receive grace to provide for my family and to protect my family. And it starts with your relationship. Show me how you provide for her and show me how you protect her. I'm not just talking of finances necessarily. Show me your attitude towards responsibility. I can discern your nonchalance about life. Nonchalance about people. How many gentlemen do not have this fatherhood consciousness? Let me tell you. When a guy begins to have a fatherhood consciousness, he will travel and go on a trip. Every time he's returning, he's thinking, there are people in my house or there are roommates that I have. What can I buy for them? Even if it's as little as cheese balls, that's fatherhood. A sense of responsibility. Self-centeredness is dying. You know that it's not about me alone. You are satisfied when people drink from your grace, drink from your finances. You are becoming a father. How many of us travel for, for five months, five weeks? You come back and the only thing is the same box you went with. Guys, how you doing? I don't miss you. Now, Kai, now, wow. And you gist everybody and you see all of them hungry. Say, never chop. And you are just watching. You are not a father, you are a friend. When you call God Father, you are not just calling God Father because. You are his son or his daughter. You are calling God father because as your father, he has made it a point of duty to provide for you and to protect you. He provided salvation. He secures that salvation today. He has provided a platform for you to be a partaker of his divine nature. He has provided a platform for you to enjoy the life, the Zoe life here on earth. That's what makes him a father. Many men deceive themselves thinking because they have the ability to produce babies or they have produced babies, they are fathers. Fatherhood is not just about reproduction. Fatherhood is about responsibility. So brothers, God is asking you tonight, are you a father? You can train yourself into fatherhood. You can know that you are a father. You are not a father when you marry. You get married because you believe you are a father now. When you understand this, you will never go and carry any man's daughter to get married to her when you know that there is no means for you to eat. You are not a father. At that point, the lady does not have to start asking you, where are we going to eat food? How is money going to come? Because if you are truly a father, you would have made that factor. You would have factored in as part of your marriage and relationship responsibilities that I am Abba, provider, protector. Is God speaking to us tonight? The third dimension for any gentleman preparing for marriage, the third dimension is as the priest. Every man is instituted by God to be the spiritual head of his home. Ladies, that's why it is important and paramount that you must not compromise on the issue of marrying somebody who loves God. Our parents made that mistake. Many young people who are not exposed to this truth have made the mistake. But now you have an opportunity. It matters. Because according to God, he's the spiritual head. God birthed Adam. And so must be responsible. He's his spiritual head. Eve came out of Adam, everybody looks onto its source. According to God's organogram for family, the woman and her children should look up to the man for spiritual support. The man should be the initiator of Bible studies. He should be the one to teach the children on tithing. He should enforce discipline. He should enforce love. Unfortunately, that's not what we have. In many societies, it's the woman who is trying to get the family to be spiritual. Because there are forces of darkness and they are real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Children should be able to come to the parlor and see their father lie down and just worshiping and playing worship and just rolling on the floor and giving God praise. I was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday. Did you know that the moment you begin to carry out your priestly responsibility, sooner or later your son or daughter will start copying. 
Have you seen children do that? That you see a father kneel down. Very soon you see the child too will come and kneel down. How many men do you know have taken on their priestly responsibility that while everybody is sleeping at home, you now hear the voice of the priest. Room to whom? Laying hands on the wife and children. These are my children. This is my family. I bring them under the grace, under the prophetic covering. Satan, you have no hand over my wife, over my children. That's what it means to be a spiritual head. Not that they wake you by seven and say, honey, Bible study is five. Say, the day you wake me again, I swear to God, I will slap you. Don't play with me. Please, we are not mates. You are here eating. You don't know how I'm bringing the food. Spiritual head. The spiritual head. Every man must take position. And it starts from the relationship. It starts from the relationship. You must take position. Now it's okay. Let's be very sincere. There are times when you can enter a relationship with a lady who is more spiritual than you. Are you willing to catch up? Are you willing to grow? That seed of willingness is what we are looking for. You may not be like that as, the, as at the time you are in the relationship or even marriage. But do you sustain the seed? Speed wiggles what? When he got married, his wife was more spiritual than him. He was a coupler, but he was able to catch up and he became the apostle of faith. How many people have allowed demons to drive their homes into pieces? Your wife is pregnant. That's the time to lay hands on her womb and prophesy. When she gives birth in the hospital, you should be the first to hold the baby. Don't allow anybody just come from anywhere and, and soil the destiny of your child and then you just come too late and you are shouting hey, why is the baby big you should be there you hold the baby and prophesy like Anna the prophetess and Simeon the prophet you hold your child and speak into his destiny whenever evil is going on in the family your life and your ministry is turning upside down. You take your regalia of a husband and put it aside. You take your regalia of a father and put it aside. And wear your prophetic and apostolic robe. And tell the devil, I'm not just a husband. I'm not an irresponsible man. And you tell all your children, just leave me. I know these forces. Go and sleep. And they hear your voice. That's manhood, brothers and sisters. That's being a man. You take the spiritual atmosphere. You move out with buckets of water oil and anointing oil around the length and breadth of your house and you are prophesying, commanding the forces of darkness to bow. Your child brings a result and you find out that the result is not motivating. You lay hands on him and say, you are my son. Everyone looks like his source. I lay my hands on you. Not to get Cain and start frogging him and playing ball with your child because he's embarrassing you. Let me tell you, the world that we live in is no longer the world of physical strength. It's the world of spiritual capacity. He may be a bubble, but let him be a man of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because a day will come, jeans will not save you. Polo shirt will not drive demons. It is on the strength of the understanding of mysteries. Have you seen families where sickness just breaks out? Mother is sick. Brother is sick. Father is sick. And you see the man running confused. He has not learned the mysteries. That's the time for him to get communion. And say, my wife, prepare communion. Man, takatata. Reketekete. And he lays hands on it. And say, by this tree, the Bible says, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And you minister communion to your family. Brothers, I challenge you. Make your home like this. It is within your power to make it so. It may not be so for ladies because they submit to a man. You are not submitting to anybody in the home. That means your home is a reflection of whether you pay attention to what I'm hearing tonight. I've made up my mind that my home will be exactly what I will tell you. I must take on my priestly position. Many men have allowed the devil to ride through their families and wreck and destroy their homes. The Bible says occupy. You occupy through dominion. 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 Your wife gives birth to two or three children and you are expecting more and it looks like the devil has closed up her womb and all of that and you are just, you are just smiling and saying, don't worry, it will happen. What are you saying? 
get angry one night and while she's sleeping you just come and sit by the side of her bed and when she wakes up say no no you just continue sleeping i know what i'm doing i come in the spirit of eli and you are speaking and prophesying let me tell you there is no woman i know who will not want that kind of man by her side a man ladies am i speaking to you guys you think ladies just want money let me tell you the truth many ladies especially those who are loving god know sincerely that it takes more than money you can have all the money in the whole world and anything can go wrong but a man of stature not a physically macho man necessarily a man with capacity in the spirit that any spirit that is flying around the vicinity of your family when he gets here say hold on i know this guy we know we know the weight he carries in the spirit when the devil wants to touch your wife and he realizes that she's bearing your son name. He knows that that woman has been implicated. Brothers, when you become a husband, a father, and a minister, you are ready for marriage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So right now, while you are sitting, some of you are husbands, congratulations. Are you a father? Some of you are only priests. Mr. Man, let me tell you, you are not only going to be casting out spirits and devils you don't cast out devils every day right now the atmosphere is okay be a husband be a friend. are you getting what i'm saying now let's go to the ladies quickly please sit down three ladies quickly oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. three ladies worship team Hallelujah. Are you enjoying tonight's teaching? The first dimension, sister, open your eyes, your ears and everything and hear. The first dimension is as a wife. Don't assume you know what I'm saying. Let me explain. This is a mother. This, again, is a minister. Now watch this. What does it mean to be a wife? What does it mean to be a wife? Many ladies do not know what it means to be a wife. They think they know. A wife, just like the husband, defines the entire scope of your ministry to your husband. Not your husband and your father. Not your husband and his family. Under the dimension of a wife, your ministry is only to your husband. Let me use this opportunity and challenge many ladies who can keep their men at second place. You love your father, your mother, your brother, your uncle so much. Everything you do to your husband, you do to everyone else. You are not a wife. You are not a wife. That dimension of being a wife is a dimension that creates an office for the man to feel like the man in your life. That is the dimension where you bring the king out of that man. That is the dimension where you let the man know that you are not like all other men. You are exclusive and I demonstrate it in every way possible. By meeting your emotional need, by looking physically attractive for you. Oh yes. Hello. By now, I know you are aware that physical attraction means a lot to men. If you are not aware, you are hearing it now. Are you getting me? Don't think because you get married. I'm not talking of nudity. Don't get me wrong. Are you getting the point? I'm not talking of nudity and seduction. No. No. But I've seen so many men depressed over their wife. They just get married five years, ten years, and the woman is looking as if she's hundred years old. She does not care. She has thrown away her wifehood because she thinks she's giving birth to plenty of children. And the man is frustrated. He looks at another lady who is ten times older than her, and she's looking like an angel. And his own wife is looking like whatever it is there. Please don't play games with men. Let me tell you. Any man, I don't care whether anointing oil is on top of his head jesus is written on top of his head there is a dimension a lady was wired by god to make a man feel like a man if you don't do it is because of negligence not because you have not been equipped and that has nothing to do with seduction from your physical outlook let the man be proud of you 
not a lady that you just got married and the man says come and escort me somewhere you just dress as if you are going for a night vigil and he's looking smart looking like a young man you are there embarrassing him and he said honey you can just sit at the car honestly i'll be brief i'll just come and say no no i must come i want to see what you are hiding if nobody has told you i'm telling you now in the name of the lord it matters it matters ladies it matters and it starts from relationship are you a wife when was the last time you made the guy god sent to you feel like a king let me tell you in every brother there is a king it takes a wife to bring that king out are you getting me when you find yourself shouting at a guy and taking advantage of his niceness there are some brothers that are very cool-headed even if you slap them they won't do anything and you deceive yourself to think that because they are cool-headed they are foolish there is a lion in every brother there is a lamb in every brother keep the lion in the cage don't let it come out you won't like it you must make every guy feel like a king Vashti stop being a wife as a result she left the palace Vashti she stopped being a wife when the king wanted to feel like a king she was not available and he sent her out and here came Esther Hadassah Hadassah always made the king feel like a king she prepared a feast for him and he said what's the occasion for the feast she said nothing just heralding your royalty and the king said my goodness please do it again and then by himself he said what do you want to half of my kingdom a man will give you anything if you bring the king in him don't make requests until he becomes a king how many ladies have strangled the king dimension in their men you just come and say um do you know that that other brother bought me a laptop can you serve how many months six months you have been trying to buy a laptop one brother just came out just from church oh, no strings attached you are killing the king when there is no king in your kingdom enemies will come keep the king alive ladies keep the king alive there are some things ladies have been doing that a guy is tolerating it does not mean that's how he was designed to live you shout at a guy anyhow and speak to him anyhow He's supposed to see you by seven. He comes by eight. You don't give him room to explain himself. Let me tell you this. Nah, 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 nah. And you are acting Nigerian film there. Yeah, there is a king in every guy. Don't take the generosity of any man for granted. I'm sorry to say this. Many married women have taken their husbands for granted. They do not exalt that king dimension. When you got married to him, you used to bring food in a tray. And be very respectful now you just carry a bottle of juice as if you are selling it just drop it on the table and say um, there's rice in the kitchen and he will get up you see that's the thing with many men they will get up quietly and go and serve themselves but you are endangering your marriage you are endangering your relationship many ladies are embarrassed to be wives because it takes submission to be a wife if you are still driven by ego and i don't want to look cheap you will never be a wife to be a wife you must soil your hand and create a king out of that man but if you can be stupid enough to make that man a king he will be a fool for you that's his reward ladies say after me in the name of jesus shout it in the name of jesus I receive grace to be a wife indeed. Sisters, hear me. Don't learn those jargons that you watch on TV. There is a difference between secular relationships and marriages and kingdom relationships. Please don't let anybody confuse you. A virtuous woman who can find. The Bible says her husband will praise her at the gates. She will do him good all the days of her life. Can you honestly say from the day you started going out with that guy, you have brought joy? Ask yourself, have you brought joy? Don't lie. From the time you started going out with the guy, have you brought joy to his life? Or heartbreak, his finances went down, his reputation went down, his spiritual life went down, his ego went down, his sense of purpose went down. You are not a wife. He that finds a wife, you must be a wife to be found. It's not marriage that makes you a wife. When a man comes to you, it's a sign that you have become a wife. 
he that finds a wife, not a woman. There are many women, there are few wives. He that finds a wife. Number two, mother. Watch this. Mother. In one word, a mother is the maker of the home. The key word under motherhood is sacrifice. There are many ladies who have paid the price to be wives. They can give any guy the kind of love he wants. They can cook for the guy. They can do everything but they are not mothers. Ladies, I challenge you to have an elderly woman in your life who will not feel embarrassed to teach you motherhood. Ladies, I challenge you in the name of the Lord. Do not allow westernization suck out the dimension of motherhood in you. Motherhood. A man can build a house but it takes a woman to make a home. A man cannot make a home. A man can build a house and put chairs in it. A home talks of the emotional climate. Creating the conducive atmosphere for love. The conducive atmosphere for unity. The conducive atmosphere for progress and peace is the responsibility of a woman. I challenged the school of ministry and I said, when I come to anybody's house, there are three things, ladies, I will look at in your house to prove to me whether you are a mother indeed. Number one, your kitchen. Your kitchen is a reflection of your motherhood ability. Kitchen. That's where the meals are made. Right? That's where the health of the people is preserved. There are many people, their kitchen is a mess. There are many young ladies. You dress well, you wear new clothes, but your kitchen is a mess. Five day old plates, one week old plates, roaming around in the kitchen there. Yeah. The sink is dirty. You look at the cookers, palm oil, everything on it. You see bread that has fungi. To carry it and throw it, you leave it, you leave it there. The trash can is filled with dirt. You are not a mother. You may be a good wife, but not a good mother. The Bible says she wakes up in the morning talking about her motherhood dimension while it is yet early and prepares something for the children. Proverbs 31. And she comes to cover them to make sure they are warm in winter. That's a mother. A homemaker. Sisters, are you mothers? Are you mothers indeed? That's a question God is helping us to understand tonight. Many ladies are not mothers, but you can be mothers if you make that decision tonight. So your kitchen. Number two, your toilet. The toilet in many homes is a disaster. A disaster plus plus. Disaster. One universal towel used by everybody, including visitors. One universal sponge. Right? A sponge that looks like a rag torn into pieces and the woman cannot buy another one listen let me tell you ladies there are some responsibilities that are not for men don't let anyone fool you if you see a man doing it he's doing it out of love he won't do it forever you can't expect a man to go to the market and go and buy new buckets and bring it back home and say i notice buckets are empty please don't insult the man there is a king in every man i'm not saying men cannot do it but what is your own rule a child is running out of the house mucus everywhere torn trouser you see you see children running out of homes no clothes and he runs and hugs somebody outside and the man is feeling embarrassed and the wife is just looking won't you come in to come in and see the other things toilets you look at the toilet and people it is not flushed it's not clean there is no water people bath and they leave the remaining water there the second person comes to add his water on it and now bath all kinds of things happen come on let's tell ourselves the truth many homes have dirty toilets ladies make sure you are not praying for an award-winning man to keep him in that kind of atmosphere shout no way i hope so i really hope so How many ladies are not proactive? They get up and go to the market only to shop clothes and hair. 
and you cannot buy soap. The man is rushing because he has to catch up with an appointment. Ah, soap is finished. And the wife said, sorry, honey. And he now checks. Ah, the towel. This, there's no water. Meru has not come. All kinds of domestic things. You want the man to do everything. No, that's the dimension of a mother. A man returns back from work, tired and hungry. And that's when the woman lazily drags herself, trying to break pieces of eggs and, and open up indomie to make dinner. And yet when they ask you who do you want to marry they say you know what i want to marry no are you preparing god is not a wicked man to carry his son that has been sweating in the vineyard and come and keep you and then you strangle him to death there are many men that are heartbroken as a result of the way their wives trivialize them please ladies listen god is speaking to us don't you ever if you if a man has not talked to you about it i promise you it's just because he's tolerating you it's not because he's enjoying it there are men who can just take up with anything but don't 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 push men to the wall it's god helping us and then number three your living room your parlor you enter the parlor and everything is scattered water pours on the ground the carpet is dirty pieces of paper around children roaming around everything is unkept the moment you own the fan you see dust all over the parlor and many mothers don't train their children how many ladies get up in the morning and know that part of their assignment is to make sure that their rooms are clean it starts with your own room now don't wait till you are in a bungalow you want to stay in a duplex of eight rooms are you ready to sweep it don't just say oh god i'm tired of poverty are you ready to sweep it i want a room with this i want an extra room with an aquarium every honor comes with responsibility is god speaking to us tonight if you listen to what i'm saying i promise you 10 years 20 years from now you will thank me for what i'm sharing with you your living room the key word under motherhood is sacrifice sisters look at me very carefully if you are unwilling to let go things right now you are not a mother i'm telling you this you are not a mother there are ladies who cannot give up their food they cannot share anything there are ladies who even if you have one million naira and a guy stands here with one thousand naira you want him to buy something of 900 naira for you and keep 100 naira what sort of person are you once there is no heart of sacrifice you are not a mother because a good mother will inconvenience herself a good mother will protect the image of the father and the husband have you seen many of our mothers do a lot of things and give the honor and the credit to the husband the man has no idea visitors are coming to the house and they come and they see all kinds of meals different types and the friends of the man turn and say ah ah promise promise your house is heaven or earth, oh. and you see him laughing he did not contribute anything to that table but he's happy and the woman because she's a good woman she's happy they will ask her they say madam you are really enjoying no that means your husband is taking care of you and she'll say bless god not that she'll call the person aside and say see this is my initiative i did it because i fear god if i'm to wait for this idiot nothing will happen in this house How many of you right now can do good and give the credit to the man God has given you and not be ashamed? Ladies, how many of you can do that? That you are the one that dressed him well and when he comes out and people are saying, Kai, you have an excellent dress sense, you keep quiet. You know that you look and say, excellent, Kai. Dress sense. I was almost passing the night at a tailor's place to make sure they finish the clothes. Now you are giving the credit to him. A mother does not want any glory for herself. Her pride is that her husband and children are lifted, even at her expense. That's why you see a woman can carry her food. When a visitor comes and the husband says, is there anything to eat? She says, ah, yes, yes. Whereas that food she's saying yes to is her meal. And she will run to the kitchen, turn it in another plate, warm it quickly, and come. And the children are saying, mommy, boy, you have not eaten. Don't worry. She's protecting the 
image of the family. You must receive grace to be a mother. Number three, every woman is a priest too. Every woman, listen. And this applies most especially to single moms and women who maybe their husbands are bereaved and so on and so forth. That there is no man in your life, whether technically or directly, if there is no man in your life, you must still perform that role of priesthood. I read a book some years ago, The Power of a Praying Wife. And that book changed my life. Every woman must be on her knees. This is your altar in the home. Every woman must create an altar. Especially if you are marrying a man of God. Don't wait until scandals kill him and eat up his ministry. Where will you be at the point where Jezebel is killing him and destroying his image? There is a way you can know that your husband is getting busy. He's getting busy and spiritually he's not intact. You can discern that he's going down. That's the time to go on your knees and intercede for him. You see him making foolish decisions. He's a leader over millions of people. One decision can implicate him. There are psychophants. There are newspapers waiting to discredit his grace. A true priest is a woman who can pray and fast. And stand in and say, Lord, I'm praying for my husband. I'm praying for my family. Men, no matter how discerning we are, most times we don't discern marital evil fast till it destroys us. I can hug 30 ladies right now as generous as possible. A lady can sit down and know the one that hugged me from the spirit and the one that hugged me from the flesh. A guy will not know. The guys will say, man, Kai, you are a very nice person. But a lady will look and say, Kai, now, nah, no way. This, this one, I felt something in me when, when that lady hugged that brother my spirit told me that this hug is, is too generous for just a normal godly expression of love that means god has given you that spiritual equipping to save the man from danger how many women sit down and have dreams and you see the life and the business and the ministry of your husband crushing god didn't just show you to keep it a man is going on a trip and you started sensing in your spirit maybe accident why don't you discuss and say honey let's pray say oh, let him go and then something happens he returns back on bike and tells you the car is damaged and he said oh i saw it oh i saw it what did you do about it remember the wife of herod let me prove this to you remember the wife of herod she had a dream and she saw the innocence of jesus she got up and told her husband this man is innocent i know you people want to kill him my spirit tells me he's innocent Throw away that thief Barabbas. Let them crucify him. Leave this innocent man. But they didn't listen to her. How many men have ignored the priestly roles of their wives to their detriment? Brothers, let me tell you. I shared with the school of ministry students. There is a prophetic dimension in every woman. It's just that that prophetic dimension is fragile. You must love her and honor her prophetic office. And then you will benefit from it men because we are egotistic people every little thing you turn to a lady and say i beg she's a lady i know that they are emotional there are times that ladies can handle intelligent things emotionally but let me tell you something there are times that in the midst of their emotionalism they can speak forth the counsel of god there are times a, a man sits down and is trying to do business with some friends and you see his wife keeps quiet she's not hearing the conversation but her spirit her spirit and she says honey i don't know what is going on but i am sorry i'm not disrespecting you but this your oil thing you have been doing from the day you started it something in my spirit i sense god doesn't want you to be there you say god doesn't want me to be there are you aware have you seen the last pta letter have you seen now they have increased the school fees it's now 150,000. please don't annoy me and the woman says i'm sorry until the day they now call and say madam are you Mrs. So, so so please come and identify your husband in the prison we just locked him up there is a priestly dimension to every lady brothers please don't let the beauty of any sister fool you beauty without god is nonsense are you hearing me i repeat beauty without god is nonsense the beauty of a lady can fade like a leaf added to that beauty add spirituality Add spirituality. 
and spirituality. One of my greatest joys is that by the grace of God, some of the people who have risen from this ministry and have gotten married, almost every one of them I know of, they are enjoying heaven on earth because of some of these principles. You never go to their homes and see cat and dog. No, you never see that kind of thing. There is love. The homes may not be perfect, but I tell you there is God in that home. They love themselves. They are living by the principles of the kingdom. So ladies, there are three dimensions to you. The first dimension is what? A wife. And the, your ministry as a wife is to your husband alone. Please, don't think in-laws are equal to your husband. Don't think children are equal to your husband. There is a way you concentrate on children and refuse your husband. You are not doing him good. There is a way you concentrate on in-laws. There are ladies who will rather their in-laws be exalted than their husband. Every time you see cow tail pepper soup, in-laws are coming. You have never prepared it for your husband. Gary in the morning, the remaining in the evening. That's how the man lives. You starve that man because he has vowed to be faithful to you. He has lived in a prison because of his commitment to be faithful. If I were a lady, see, there is what you do to a man, even if a woman is walking naked, he will just say, You are joking, you know, you are joking. Temptation goes kilometers away because there is absolutely no reason except demonic oppression why he should look at another woman. What in the world? Ladies, I challenge you. I want you to lock your husband's attention to you. It's as if you are programming him. Keep him to look at you all the days of your life and have no reason whatsoever to look at another woman. The power is within you. It's within you. Every time Jezebel wants to come and destroy a home, they usually use the lapses of the woman. There is usually something a woman is ignoring that somebody does if you are not cooking well for the man and you have not paid attention to learn new meals you only know how to cook six meals yam beans jollof your traditional food and and and, and maybe any other thing chips how can the man eat just that all the days of his life during the meeting in office they try to give him a sumptuous meal he rejects it because he wants to come and honor you he doesn't want to come back satisfied and you start suspecting him. And so he rejects a meal that would have given him joy all through that night and comes back home and meets a disaster. And the, the pain is he knows that that disaster will be repeated again and again and again. And so a woman now starts calling him by 1030. Hello sir, sorry oh, please don't be offended. I know that uh, I don't deserve to be calling you. And the man is saying, uh, who is this trying to bring the king out of me? What is all this? I say, sorry, sir, don't, don't be offended. Um, I, I just wanted to find out, have you eaten, sir? Who is this? It's your secretary, please. I'm, I'm sorry. I hope, I, I hope I'm not interrupting your mood. And the man will say, no, 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 no. Bye-bye. He will off it as if he was courageous. But a seed is being sown. And he's saying, I cast this. What is all that? The next day again, sir, have you arrived home safely? And while he's doing that, the woman is watching Nigerian film and laughing. We get here, let the man punish you. Whereas your family, your family is on fire. There's fire on the mountain. Oh, I know it. Come on. And there is fire on the mountain. You are about to face a bitter experience. The woman is calling. And then the man now calls her back. And says, what is it? Why are you disturbing me? She says, no sir. I thought as a secretary, I should really find out about your, your well-being. I just wanted to, uh, you didn't look very nice in the office. And then he says, eh, uh, you know, GM spoiled my mind. I mean, what is all that? I'm an innocent person. You don't need to tell me, sir. I know. I have always known that you're an exceptional man. I mean, the, the, your file come through my table. The king, another woman is bringing the king out of that man. Madam, 
fire on the mountain your home is at let me tell you don't think because he's a pastor he's not a human being don't think because he's a reverend with collar on his neck the moment satan finds out that you are ignoring your role somebody will start playing the role and we live in a generation where there is an average of three to five lady for every available man and so there are people who are not desperate they are not ashamed to be as desperate as anything he comes up in the morning to the office and there's a hot cup of coffee say i i saw your schedule for today and i saw that car your day is busy and i thought you really need to be agile and working and the man locks the door and says what is this woman doing to me oh god you know i'm faithful i i am married to one woman and carries the picture of his wife and puts it on the table so that the woman will come and see and when she comes she says wow what a lovely woman i can imagine the way you are doing well in your house with this woman women are wise they know exactly what to say says i can imagine i mean no wonder if you have a pretty woman like this you should be eating well she's she's not an idiot she knows exactly how to get the man and keeps you in a position where you now have to contemplate i'm eating well am i am i no very soon you start coming home with her you start coming home with her and the nonchalant wife is insensitive and she does not recognize that before you know it one day the woman will find out that whether she meets her husband emotionally or not he doesn't care whether she cooks for him or not he has stopped quarreling her let me assure you somebody has sat down on the throne of your office comfortably and is enjoying your husband you can keep the name while she keeps the experience she may not want to marry him keep the name dear mrs whatever while she keeps the experience every time we hear that a man fell or a man is sleeping around people are so quick to call the man idiot stupid you claim you are born again the question i want to ask is where was the woman where was the woman when that was happening it is not good the bible never said it is not good for a woman to be alone a woman can be alone but it is not good god knows why he said it is not good in other words it is dangerous it's better for the man to be a celibate supernatural grace comes upon him but when he's married madam don't play games with your husband god bless you one more thing and we're done today are you blessed so far i want to share on what i call the biblical pathway to finding a life partner we end there pray in tongues for one minute thank you jesus i believe that this will heal relationships and heal homes just give me a few minutes and let me say what i'm about to say very seriously thank you jesus the biblical pathway to finding a life partner please look up everyone is there a method or a formula if you want to say to finding a life partner because it looks like the church is largely confused i shared with you a few things from prophetic confusion to here and there the interesting thing when i was doing a little research for this message i found something that shocked me there were all kinds of ways that people married in the bible let me give you a few all kinds of ways good bad ugly for instance hosea finds and marries a prostitute hosea chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 you don't need to write it just listen moses finds a man with seven daughters he waters the flock and carries a wife free of charge exodus 2 verse 16 to 21 boaz buys a land and with that property he finds a poor lady and she becomes his wife what a coincidence Ruth chapter 4 from verse 5 to 10 are you blessed the benjaminites in jude 21 verse 19 to 25 they stole women and ran away with them that's how the women that's how they married so just go to a camp steal a woman disappear with her <clears throat> jacob he labored for seven years times two genesis 29 
verse 15 to 30. Seven years of toiling and labor. Got the wrong wife, labored for another seven years, got the one he wanted. 14 years labor to get a wife. 29 verse 15 to 30 of Genesis. David, he kills Goliath, gets rich, marries the king's daughter, and frees his house from paying tax. That's how he got his wife. First Samuel 17 verse 25. The king swore that whoever defeats Goliath, he will give him his wife, he will make him rich, and the family will no longer pay tax. Ahasuerus was rich enough to organize a beauty contest where all the virgins in the land were brought and he got a wife. Esther chapter 2 from verse 3 to 4. David kills Uriah and marries his wife. So in the Bible, people killed people and married their wife. Second Samuel 11. Solomon found out that marrying one or two is not the way. So he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Second Kings 11 verse 1 to 3. These are different skills and strategies. People explore this marriage thing in the Bible. 1,000 women in his life so that he can be faithful. And then Paul in 1 Corinthians 7, 32 to 35 just said, look, all this thing is a mess. Let me just serve God and leave. And so he refused to get married. Now you see, I just did a little rundown. There were times when there are more like capturing slaves. You capture a slave and turn her into your wife. So if you read the Bible without the wisdom of the spirit, you will be deceived. Which of the method will you choose? Kill a man's wife? Kill a man's husband? A woman's husband? And marry, and marry her? Or go to a vineyard and buy real estate? And everything in it plus the woman is a sign that is your wife or organize a beauty contest and then do it like the bachelor and then the finest becomes your wife or marry 1,000 women or defeat as federal government what they will give you if you will fight terrorism maybe you marry the president's daughter Anyway, the point here is this. There are many examples. The Bible, interestingly. Now, I don't know why exactly. But the Bible does not exactly give us a direct formula. Like salvation. You know, when it comes to salvation, there's a formula. Is that true? There is a way you know you are not saved. There is a way you know you are saved. But for marriage, um, it seemed as though there was no exact formula. And I believe the reason is because we are dealing with human beings here. Hallelujah. But then I've been able to bring up a few things that I want us to look at. We may not have the time to consider two incidences in the Bible. Adam, the first marriage in Genesis 2.21. Let's just look at it if you can help us. Okay. Genesis 2.21. Let's just turn there so that we'll hurry up and pray. Genesis 2.21. I want to bring out a few points that will bless us. Genesis 2.21 Genesis 2.21 If you are there, say Amen. And the rib, listen, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Now, the point here, the key verse is verse 23. And Adam said, This is now what? Bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Why? Because she was taken out of man. Watch this. So, the wife that Adam married was made of the same material. The same substance. The same ideology. The same conviction. Are we getting some points there now? So Adam married a woman who was made of the same substance. If she was a lion, their substance would not be compatible. So we see compatibility as a key here. It had to be a woman who was taken out of him. Had the same composition with him. Spiritual composition. Psychological composition. Biological composition. You never marry a man or a woman that does not sustain the same composition with you.
there will be big trouble. I wanted to talk on Genesis 24, the story of Isaac. That's the first show in the Bible where a man goes to look for a wife for another person. But let's just jump that. Points to note. There, are no, there is no physical formula provided for finding a wife. But there are scriptural guidelines. There is no physical formula in the Bible. The Bible scatters guidelines. And I've been able to bring five scriptures that if you use, they will guide you to make a very godly decision. Ready? Number one, Proverbs 18.22. Proverbs 18.22 If you can help us media, let's just hurry up. Proverbs 22 Proverbs 18 verse 22 Okay, look up please. Read with me. Inside and outside. One to read. Who saw what? Findeth a wife. Findeth a good thing. And obtains favor. So automatically the Bible shows us that the process of getting a wife will demand responsibility on the part of the man. There will be action. It will involve you. The word fine. It then says whosoever picks a wife or whosoever prays a wife to come. Whosoever finds a wife. It gives an idea of searching. It gives an idea of desire. That means there will be commitment if you want to get married action will be required on your own part the bible says whosoever finds a wife you're not going to sit down where you are and want a lady to come and meet you it's not going to happen that way regardless of whether you saw a vision or not there will be an initiation there will be a step you must take number two Amos chapter 3 verse 3. It buttresses on Genesis chapter 2. Amos 3 verse 3. Very quickly please. Amos 3 verse 3. This is the grand key. I believe to a successful marriage. And relationship. The key to a successful marriage is not love. It has been proven again and again. That love is not enough to keep marriage. Can two work together. Except they what be agreed the word be agreed is the word compatible 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 measures your degree of agreeableness spiritual agreeableness psychological agreeableness similarity in ideologies about god about money about life about parenting two will work together if they are compatible are you getting what I'm saying now? Very important. That means, come. That means, it doesn't matter whether I saw her in a vision or in a dream. Whether I saw myself wearing a bow tie and she was wearing a white wedding gown and a flower came from heaven and said, this flower is your marriage flower. I don't care what you saw or did not see. If there is no compatibility, imagine for instance, that this is my wife i get married to this young lady right and i'm praying in tongues or she is praying in tongues and i'm turning and say what is that i don't believe in praying in tongues two are not working together i believe in spending and wastage i believe in my ego i rather let children die to be giving donations to church and that's not her mindset you see that there is friction so what is your ideology about god bless you what is your ideology about God? What is your ideology about money? What is your ideology about culture? Culture. Culture. What's your ideology about ministry? A man of God, for instance, goes to get a lady because she's fine. Have you seen whether what is her passion about ministry? Otherwise, she will be fine for nothing and destroy your church. When she's supposed to be a model, she cannot sacrifice. She can't lay down her life to be the mother figure for the church. Is God speaking to us? I want you to write this down and start it. Never. I don't care what you see in the spirit. Never, brothers. 
ask a lady out who you are not compatible with you are going to destroy her or she will destroy you even if she does not have every ideology straightened out does she have the teachability sisters does he have the teachability it's not just that he's in a jeep what is his ideology about managing challenges otherwise you are a christian you will get married to him he tells you he's a christian and the next thing he brings the tail of an antelope or the tail of an, any animal and hangs it as a jazz and says see i know i'm a christian but let me tell you my great grandfather had this thing it's like that in our culture everybody brings it if you don't understand just keep it there that's supposed to be a christian he wakes up in the morning and he's making incantations on that tale and you are saying my goodness what did i get married to and you know by spiritual intelligence that you are in trouble but you claimed you were marrying a rich man now you've married disaster even if you never see one vision even if you never hear anybody's name by the time you find a lady that is compatible in ideology i guarantee you except the word of god is a lie you will have an exceptional marriage that is the reason why unbelievers although when they married they were not born again because they had compatibility they still are together and christians who are born again because they think born again will solve compatibility the bible says it is better to sit at the roof of your house than to be with a contentious and angry woman you're a man of god you know where god is taking you to now you go and carry a lady that is lazy you carry a lady that is weak crying over everything let me tell you two of you are born again but just know that 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 family is on its way to crash down i tell you the truth don't don't unnecessarily just spiritualize things and say no i know my god is able this girl the way she prays mr man can is she going to be able to cook for you that's the reason why i encourage people the moment you start a relationship part of the many responsibilities of the man is take the lady to your whether your church or your meeting place wherever is your primary place of spiritual feeding do you know what let me tell you if a brother in koinonia ask a lady out in koinonia the probability of them having an exceptional marriage is even above 90 percent why because their ideologies are similar they are hearing the same thing and they believe the same thing are you getting what i'm saying now not that we say okay we are fasting for 10 days and the wife is pulling her mouth all around and angry and saying this 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 thing me i don't like all these kind of things so what kind of 10 day fast eh what is all that and the man is saying look look look, look we are going far we are going far or a woman who hates excellence and is ready to manage anything but the man is ready to stay verse number three proverbs chapter 19 verse 14 very interesting scripture when I stumbled across this, it blessed me in no small way. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14. Everyone read. One, two, read. It says, houses and riches. Meaning, your father and mother, your parents. You can inherit houses and riches. But when it has to do with a woman, you must involve God. Are you hearing now? It says a prudent wife is from the Lord. Meaning if you ignore God, you throw God out of the equation because you believe that this God, every time God comes in, he messes my relationships and makes me to take a decision. Many people hate God until they enter a relationship. They now go to God and say, Lord, this is hereby introducing my life partner. And God will say, you chose it. Go ahead. By the time you see pepper in the, in the relationship or the marriage you now turn and say god where were you god says i was here all the while behold i stand at the door and knock if you open i will come in if you give me entrance let me tell you something brothers and sisters a prudent wife 
and by extension a prudent husband is from the lord you cannot use the seeing of the eye to know that a man will still be faithful after 10 years men can change as at the time you meet the man he doesn't have money you don't know what his tendencies are you cannot use the beauty and the physique of a lady just to believe that this is my wife oh god no matter what you say a prudent wife is from the lord a prudent wife is from the lord so involve god these are the guidelines that the bible gives us so number one there is a finding you will take action and for ladies you will position yourself brothers if you ever want a wife stop sitting down and just saying visions and visions and visions i will round up with the issue of visions a prudent wife is from the lord number four isaiah 30 verse 21 is another guideline that the bible gives us isaiah 30 verse 21 very very powerful isaiah 30 Isaiah 30 21 media 30 21 please Isaiah 30 okay and thy ears shall what hear a voice behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand when you turn to the left it says you will hear a voice in other words expect the leadership of the holy spirit in helping you choose a life partner expect it the bible gives you a guarantee that you will hear a voice leading you my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice And then lastly, Luke chapter 14, verse 28. Everybody read. This is the cost dimension of marriage and relationships. Ready? Want to read. seated not down first and counted the cost whether he has what sufficient to what finish not start the building not start the marriage which of you intending to build a marital tower will not first sit down and start counting the cost am i ready to pay the school fees of children Am I ready to be responsible over a woman and her family? Am I ready to live with one woman up the days of my life and be faithful? Am I ready to grow old with this man and grow old with this woman? Am I ready to love her like my life? Am I ready to protect her? Am I ready to die for my family? This is a guideline. No matter what vision you see, no matter what dream you have, God will not count the cost for you. This is where we miss it. God can show you that shall harm is your wife. But if you don't count the cost, it will still fail. It does not mean God lied. Five scriptures that if any man uses sincerely as a guideline, you will make a good relationship. You will make an exceptional relationship. Now, let me round up by saying this. According to scripture, the prophetic is not the doctrine or the primary channel through which God reveals life partners. No. While it is true that at least in two places in scripture, we see God directly involved in bringing revelation and confirmation about a, life, a man's life partner. Number one is... The prophet Hosea, we see God himself asking him to go and marry a prostitute. But we understand that that was a prophetic message. Prophets, those people were, they were actors. God will literally use their life to act out a script and explain the harlotry of Israel to, the, to her. So he told Hosea to go and marry a prophet called Goma. And so that with her harlotry, she will leave him 
and then you say the pain you feel is the pain i always feel when israel goes to bow to other gods number one number two we see joseph being afraid knowing that mary was with child he wanted to divorce her quietly and the angel appears and gives a divine confirmation don't be afraid to take her as your wife are, are you getting the point now no other place i know in scripture where you find god giving direct revelations no there are guidelines there are principles now does god reveal spouses to people yes he does but i believe strongly that there are two conditions for that number one is based on your personal degree of intimacy and relationship with god and your level of yieldedness to him there is a way i can walk with god and earn certain privileges on on the strength of my intimacy with him i have so given all to god that he knows that whatever choice he makes for me i am that dead to say yes to him based on that god is able to open you up and give you the privilege of using visions and revelations it is rather a unique case or use a prophet to speak to you another key that justifies prophetic revelation is the nature and the kind of assignment there are certain kinds of assignment that will necessarily involve you marrying certain kinds of women or men for instance being in ministry as a man of god because of the nature of your call god will not allow you to just marry anybody you will find out that there are probings and there are dealings god will be exceptionally meticulous aside from these two instances every other means of marriage in the bible is simply not just waiting for what you call god's timing are you seeing the mistake now god's timing is when you become a husband when you become a father when you become what when you become that it is time for marriage because male and female he created them and god already gave a command be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth when woman was was brought into the sea god saw that it is good so waiting forever to say god wants me to marry in 2020 or god wants me to marry at 50 that's why at 45 i'm not married no 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 it is absolutely up to you if you delay marriage because you are trying to be a husband a father and a priest i salute you don't let anybody push you under pressure and say marry or as a lady if you feel that you need some space to become a wife a mother and a priest i also salute you because it is a sign of honor to both your husband and your wife respectively so the church has been caught up in all these illusions because there has not been a very we have complicated the issue of marriage whereas it is a very very simple thing look at me any brother here that believes that you have trained yourself to be a husband a father and a priest i guarantee you the gates are open for you for marriage and no demon in hell will stop you and any lady that truly you can know you are prepared some of you right now at once you will stop praying oh god when will he come right now you are seeing that truly truly you are not prepared especially for the kind of person you want let me balance this if you have a vision and a dream of a man or a lady keep it to yourself and keep moving on are you hearing what i'm saying this advice is a blessed advice that will honor you the bible says and mary kept these things to herself whether it comes to pass it should not ruin your life whether there is vision or not we see in part and we prophesy in part whether there be tongues they will go away whether there be prophecy they will end but thy word O lord is settled in heaven prophecy and visions should never be exalted above the word that will become the secret to disappointment so if god shows you a guy thank god for it if god shows you a lady thank god for it 
Keep those visions. Honor them. But keep preparing to follow the truths of the written word. If it so happens that God brings a person and confirms his word, glory be to God and we give him praise. If it so happens that things did not work exactly as shown in the vision, Lord, I give you praise. I am growing. Are you getting that? This is a recipe for freedom. Otherwise, there will keep being repeated cycles of heartbreaks and disappointment in the church. Right now, when brothers and sisters are getting married, there are people who come for weddings with heart-shattering pain. They sit down and it's almost like a nightmare as they watch the man they have always desired being given to another woman. Or they watch the lady they've seen all their lives in a dream. Listen. We exalt the word of God above any dream. Above any vision. That's the reason why you can dream and see five different ladies at five different times. Do not allow yourself to be discouraged because not everything may be a lie. It may be true. However, make up your mind that this word that abides forever will become your key. So my brother, the key to your marriage is in your hands. My sister, the key to your marriage is in your hands. It's not in the hands of a dream. It's not in the hands of a prophet. It's not even in the hands of God. He has given it to you. When you become a husband, when you become a wife, when you become a father, when you become a mother, and when you become priests, you are ready for marriage. When you are ready to end prophetic and spiritual confusion, when you are ready to make your standard reasonable for a man to come into your life, or your standard reasonable to get a godly wife, when you are ready to refuse ungodly parental influences destroying your life, when you are ready to make alternatives for your finance and your establishment, and when you are finally ready to involve God in your life, then you are ready for marriage. Rise up on your feet. Lift your hands and begin to bless the Lord for tonight. The entrance of your word give it light and understanding to the simple. Koinonia, lift your voice and pray. Thank the Lord for this freedom. Many of us have been free from captivities that have held us down. Mindsets that have stopped us from moving forward. Hallelujah. Three prayer points. Number one, lift your voice and pray. And say, Father, in any way, I have been the reason for lack of relationship or marriage or lack of joy in my marriage. I repent right now. I ask you to help me. Lift your voice and pray. All the five things we have written. In any way, oh God. Please pray from your heart very quickly. In any way, I have allowed the misconceptions. The perfect match to stop me from entering a godly relationship. Thank you for opening my eyes. In any way, I have raised unreasonable standards and expectations. Financially, in terms of establishment, in terms of physical outlook, I change my mind right now. In any way, ungodly parental influences are trying to destroy my marital destiny. In any way, I have reduced my standard of spirituality and morality I receive grace I receive grace I receive grace I receive grace prayer point number two I like you to pray every one of us those three dimensions into your life especially the one you know is not at work you are a guy, pray for a husband, father, and priest. You are a lady, pray for a wife, a mother, and a priest. Lift your voice and cry to God. 
Lord, I'm a husband, but I'm not yet a provider and a protector. I'm an exceptional husband in the name of Jesus. A blessing to my wife. I'm an exceptional father. Hallelujah. For those of us trusting God for a very sound and a godly relationship, lift your voice and cry to God. The Bible says, He that finds a wife finds a good thing. A lady that positions herself to be found has also done a good thing. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I will not make a mistake in my marriage. I will not just judge by the eyes alone. Shekete baratabaladaba whose ideology is similar with me concerning God a submissive lady a lady who loves God a guy who fears the Lord a man who is faithful the Bible says a prudent wife is from the Lord speak to me speak to me concerning the person that you will for me speak to me concerning the person that is appropriate for me hallelujah listen make up your mind that your home will be an exceptional home make up your mind that your relationship will be an exceptional relationship make up your mind that everything about your life will be exceptional an exceptional father an exceptional husband an exceptional priest an exceptional wife an exceptional uh, uh, mother exceptional priest father in the name of Jesus I pray may there be miracles of marriages in koinonia in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that all the marriages that will happen in Koinonia that all through the lifespan of that marriage the couple will never have a cause to regret in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray that you supernaturally connect our brothers to our sisters may they not become sources of heart pain for them in the name of Jesus Christ I thank you because you are challenging us and working on our mindsets my God I pray in the name of Jesus that every brother here that is not fit to be a good husband good father and a good priest Lord begin to work on them and every sister that is not yet fit to be a wife a good wife a good mother and a good priest Lord begin to work on them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray that we will have exceptional homes from this place in the name of Jesus Christ that everyone will look at your relationship and look at your home and desire your kind of relationship in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen and amen now listen look up the greatest marriage is not the marriage between a man and a woman the greatest marriage as he said in the book of Hosea, I think chapter 6, I have betrothed you. I have begotten you. This is God speaking. The greatest marriage is the marriage between the lamb and the church. He says, I speak of Christ and his church. There are people here who have not experienced that spiritual marriage. That reconnection to the God of your salvation. You have not made your, like a faithful bride. You have not come back to your husband to repent and to be reconnected there are others who have given their lives to jesus christ but for some reason you found yourself derailing tonight this is home for you there are many people outside at the sound of my voice and some inside i want to guide you in the next one minute to make it right with jesus this is the greatest marriage wherever you are please leave your seat and make your way to the front right now koinonia celebrate them as they come those who are making their ways right please don't let anybody come before you Make your way and come to the front. Don't let anybody stop you. God bless you. They are coming. 
they are coming from inside and outside god bless you don't be ashamed jesus is calling you god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming inside and outside god bless you god bless you keep coming keep coming if there are more people please make your way to the front hallelujah praise the lord lift your hands and say after me lord jesus i believe in you i believe you died for me you shed your blood for me tonight i make up my mind and i make you lord of my life i repent of my sins wash me with your precious blood and in the name of jesus my life will never be the same in the name of jesus now thank you for making this great decision i'd like you to follow the gent the the lady that is waving her hands just turn you see a lovely lady waving her hands they'll have your details and we'll welcome you celebrate him please dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development Lord, grant me the discipline 